All right, guys, today we're going to talk about the Andrew Demko or 8020.5. Talk about this blade, and I think that it is honestly a super hyped up knife, uh, whether it's the 8020.5 or the other versions, variations in a wide variety of handle handles and steels. This blade has made quite the splash here of late because of its, I think, one kind of price point, its handle material, blade shape, and its shark lock feature. Now, undoubtedly, AD or Andrew Demko, um, as a company or Demko Knives, whatever you'd like to call them, has always been a pretty sought after um, knife maker, primarily because of his work with uh, Cold Steel. Of course, many of you will probably be familiar with his design of the Triad Lock and how that went into the 8010. Um, what is it like the 8010, 8015? I'm probably messing up all these things, but uh, undoubtedly there are a number of cold steel blades out there with the AD numbers, and uh, they are pretty sought after too. And they are kind of known for botch that deployment. Um, they're, they're known for being really solid blades that can take an absolute beating, and I think that's one of the biggest reasons why a lot of people are drawn to AD knives as a whole or Demco knives and their different designs. Designs. Also, too, though, I will say a lot of them, like the 8020.5 here, come in at pretty solid price points. So I think that's another really big attractiveness. So first off, starting off, this is, like I said, a 20.5. This one is the Taiwanese manufactured OS 10A version. Now, don't get me wrong, even though some people might be saying, oh, that's the Taiwanese, you know, OS 10A version, these things are all these things are still pretty darn expensive. They go well over $100. And luckily I was I was lucky enough to get mine for what I think a pretty good deal. I got mine under $100. And overall, I can't really complain about that. This blade for, I paid about like $90 for it, um, maybe like 80. And um, for that price point, I think it's pretty darn good. And overall, I think as far as a general like EDC knife, it's just a pretty darn reliable blade. Now, I don't know if I fully buy into the hype of the 80 or Andrew Demko or Demko knives kind of train, especially with the shark lock, because the shark lock is good, obviously, there's no blade play, and there is good centering for those who care. Actually, this one might not have the best, let's see. Yeah, it's a little bit off. I need to actually straighten it up. But those are just fine nitpicks. Uh, I will say as far as it goes, it is just fine and uh, works well. I will say the action is very nice, very drop shutty, and very smooth. And that is something that I do really like. Now, as far as the shark lock goes, it's probably one of the most hyped up things on these knives. Um, but I'm honestly not the largest fan of them. I think that first off, I will say they are pretty darn painful to use if you're using your index finger with any regularity of like opening and closing this thing. It's honestly kind of painful. This uh, jimping really digs into you. The jimping really digs into you, but you also need the jimping to get a good grip on that lock. So not my favorite. I end up usually using my thumb for long-term, like opening and closing if I'm just sitting there fidgeting with it uh, because it doesn't tend to wear my thumb out as fast. That being said too, the other thing I kind of dislike about the shark lock is undoubtedly it, it is in a good and in smart spot so that you're not really going to notice it too much if you're just holding it like with a clenched fist. But if you do choke up at all like this, you will notice that prominence in the kind of meat of your palm as you come down. It's unavoidable, and while it doesn't feel too bad, it definitely is noticeable, and it is there. It's probably like one of my least favorite things about the Shark Lock is the fact that it is so prominent, like on another knife, like let's just say this Manix 2 with its ball bearing lock, you know, like you don't, you can't tell if you're holding this knife where it's at, you know, you don't really feel it at all, but yet still completely easy to use, right? The Shark Lock is probably just about as easy to use as the ball bearing, but because you have that prominence there, you will feel it in certain positions more than others. It also can be helpful though, it does act as kind of a mini ramp on the back, so it is textured. So if you do want to hold it kind of back or further back, it does give you a little bit of a jimping ramp. For me, 
I don't really feel it's that useful or that necessary, but yeah. Now I will say the shark lock is plenty strong and probably one of my favorite things is that it is one of the stronger locks that is super, super easy to use. And th there is a long list of other really nice, very strong locks such as Spider Coast compression lock. So it's not entirely unique in that role, but it is nice to see innovation. And ultimately one of the reasons why I picked this up is not just because it's hyped and you know, cause a lot of people talk about it, but honestly, as I've mentioned in many videos, I am really tired of all of these, you know, titanium frame lock or even just frame lock knives. Like, don't get me wrong, I do like my, you know, Sebenzas, I like my Hinderers, my Striders, I like all of my nice knives that have titanium frame locks, but as you can see, nothing on this uh, table here or nothing on this, um, set up here is actually a frame lock. And that's because I don't really love frame locks. I'm pretty happy that uh, these are actually my four most recent pickups for the month. And uh, none of them are frame locks, none of them are liner locks. And that's something that's made me really happy because I'm very much tired of you know dealing with frame locks because I don't actually like them that much as a locking mechanism. I would much rather have something that is more one hand friendly, something that I can just swing shut like with this. Uh, frame lock you guys can see here that you know you have to push it um, like you have to depress it close it and then actually close the knife right because your finger is in the way of the blade closing so these are far nicer far easier and far more friendly to just whip shut right so anyways mini rant aside i just am tired of frame locks and liner locks so i am very much happy to see innovation in the knife world and the cool thing about the shark lock is the fact that it is kind of like a lock back but if you made a lock back or a back lock of sorts that is one hand accessible and usable so that is probably the coolest innovation of this overall locking mechanism and it definitely is tough it's robust as far as the actual um, blade goes I did choose and what I essentially found was a drop point and I don't really mind the drop point I actually kind of like it over the uh, weird kind of modified sheep's foot um, those are not my favorite blade shapes as I've discussed in previous videos so this is a nice um, kind of look to it so ultimately too I think it does go with the whole shark theme like this whole cut out here uh, the whole uh, like drop point and little shark fin is to give this a kind of like shark-esque look to it and that's uh, the whole kind of purpose of its design and uh, features but anyways the aus 10a or aus 10a right aus 10a in this guy is perfectly fine i do have aus 10a on other dives particularly my cold steels and i think a lot of people look at aus 10a and automatically think aus 8 and honestly aus 10 is a little bit higher performance it's once again not a super steel not a powdered steel it is just a standard stainless steel, but it is a good steel nonetheless, a good performer. And kind of wrapping it up with this blade, I think that it's just a really good general purpose EDC blade. There's not too much for me to say as far as use goes. It is good. I do love the fact, if you guys can't already tell by most of the knives that I love carrying in my EDC rotation, it is one that you can choke up on. It doesn't necessarily have a dedicated like um, forward portion to the finger choil, but it does have a dedicated rear portion to the finger choil. It does have a dedicated rear portion to the finger choil, so you can choke up on it pretty darn easily and hold it get nice and close to that blade. So I do like that portion to it. I really like that. I think that makes it a very useful blade, much like, once again, others like the Auto SNG, Manix 2, and so on and so forth. Anyways, guys, probably talked your ears off already with the Shark Lock on the 80 20.5. It's a cool knife. It is pretty much. It's a pretty cool knife. It's worth checking out. I think it definitely falls in line with similar knives such as the Bug Out, such as the um, Hogue Deca. It's a slightly thinner blade. This is probably more my preference because it is just a little bit thicker, but you know, pretty slim and trim handles. I will say it is a little bit on the heavier side because it does use steel uh, in, uh, inserts into the plastic to make it a little bit more rigid, but for the most part, pretty darn cool. All right, guys, that's it. That's all. That is the 8020.5 by Demco or Andrew Demco Knives. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. As always, God bless. And I'm out.